What is up everybody, my name is Gunner Madness and we have some really interesting news with Blizzard announcing various new games and a possible new Outlast game and also Apex Legends coming right up. I usually record videos in the morning but today after recording apparently the video got corrupted and I came to know about it by the evening. But I really want this video to go out, so here I am recording the video at night. Dedication level 69. Alright, BlizzCon happened this past weekend and it announced various new games and one of them was World of Warcraft's newest expansion, Shadowlands. Which introduces an entire set of dungeons and raids for new players to conquer. In this trailer we see Sylvanas taking the crown of Lich King and using it to shatter the barrier between the living and the Shadowlands which is World of Warcraft's version of an afterlife. And I have to say, when that barrier broke, it really looked awesome and to be honest, it really felt like there is a big threat right now. And it looks like Sylvanas is working with this mysterious new character which nobody knows who it is but it looks kind of creepy. This world is a prison. I think she just opened an actual prison. <laughs> One feature coming to Shadowlands is something that players have really never seen. A randomized ever-changing dungeon called Torghast Shadow of the Damned that the game director says is inspired by the brutally challenging roguelike genre. Torghast is a dungeon that changes every time you enter it and can be played alone or up to four friends regardless of what class they are. The point of Torghast is that you will walk out with permanent upgrades but each time you play you will also earn temporary buffs that can wildly change how you play. One other new feature is Covenant which you have to choose once you have completed the main campaign and reached a level cap of 60. You can think of Covenants as Hall which can unlock long quests that will comprise of Shadowlands Endgame. Blizzard is trying and experimenting new stuff every expansion and this Shadowlands looks hell more creepier and dangerous and I like it. And the end of everything is just the beginning. Diablo has a new game called Diablo 4 which is more gory, darker and bloodier than ever. As the cinematic shows, there was a blood sacrifice needed with two of them ascending high up in the air and the other one had to summon the mother of misery herself who looks nastier and has this big gape around her eyes. It's so huge! These cinematics man I'm telling you are of another level. The biggest point in Diablo 4 is the shared open world structure which will feature 5 big contiguous regions with a day and night cycle and dynamic weather system. And since it's more like destiny, you will find random people who you will have to choose whether you want to team up with them or you can even fight them in PvP zones. Barbarian, Sorceress and Druid are the returning characters in the game with each character having something special to offer. Barbarian having 4 weapons which you can use on the go and each weapon has different abilities. Druid on the other hand has very interesting stuff which is when you use an ability, you shapeshift. You can transform into a bear or even a werewolf. Sorcerers can call down massive blizzards to slow their enemies and weaken them, attack with one massive fireball or call down a rain of them to hurt several enemies at once. So excited to see when Diablo 4 is coming, oh wait, it's not coming anytime soon is it? The director says that games like these needs more time and it's not even blizzard soon, which means we have to wait a much more longer time. Also in order to play the game you need a constant internet connection which makes sense because shared open world but even if you wanted to play solo you still need an internet connection. Diablo 4 really does look good with washed out colors and really good graphics and also will have for the first time in game cutscenes. Overwatch 2 has been made official by Blizzard themselves which has new story missions, new hero missions and a new mode called push. In this mode both teams will have a payload and they have to push the payload with the help of a robot to a common checkpoint and the first team to push the payload to the common checkpoint wins. This looks even more interesting and chaotic at the same time. The story missions of this game is a continuation of Overwatch where Overwatch team has finally come together to take on Omnic forces which are gaining ground. This will be a 4 player co-op mode but will have various cutscenes just like any other single player game. 
And to be honest, I'm really excited for the single player mode because it looks absolutely fabulous. There are also hero missions which is another co-op mission where after playing you can customize and power up your characters such as Genji who is having that sword slashing thing or whatever it is called which does look absolutely fabulous. There's also a new character named Sojourn for which nothing has been revealed yet. But why in the world is Genji covered up with a hoodie jacket? What's, what's happening there? Overwatch 2 is technically not a sequel to the game, rather it's an expansion to the storyline that has been following in Overwatch with its cinematic and events. And even interesting is that the players in Overwatch will battle side by side with Overwatch 2 players in every PvP modes. And they will also be able to play with any maps and select any characters from Overwatch 2. Meaning if you don't care about the story missions of Overwatch 2, you don't even have to buy Overwatch 2. Also, all the cosmetics in Overwatch and whatever things you have unlocked in Overwatch will automatically be transferred to Overwatch 2. This is actually really interesting and it does redefine a sequel. Huh. But for now, no release date has been revealed and the director himself told that they will go dark, meaning that there will be no news of Overwatch 2 until the release date has been finalized. Now it's time to move on to different genres with Outlast. The creators of Outlast Red Barrel Studios tweeted this interesting photo of two hands shaking. Oh wait, that's not what it means? Now a lot of people actually believe that this is Outlast 3. But it doesn't have to be because back in 2017, Red Barrel Studios themselves told that they will be working on Outlast 3 but for now they will be working on something new which is set in the same universe as of Outlast but it's not a sequel. In 2018, Philip Morin of Red Barrel told that Outlast 3 would itself depart from the first two games. So it might be Outlast 3 but not just a sequel to the older games or it could be something else set in the same universe or in other words spin-off which I should have told before but sometimes my brain it doesn't work. Outlast is still considered to be one of the best horror games in recent years and even though Outlast 2 is considered to be not as good as a sequel. It is really interesting to see whether they will be able to change the game based on the negative reviews of Outlast 2 and the positive that Outlast had. Have you played Outlast or Outlast 2? Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. Apex Legends in August rolled out a limited time event called Solos which a lot of people were happy for. Now Apex Legends is releasing another event called Duos which is releasing tomorrow. Nothing has been announced yet on what this game will have but I guess you will find out soon. Apex Legends has been wildly played all around because of its fast paced nature and most importantly being free. And recently Apex Legends started season 3 with a new hero and a new map which has mixed reviews in general. Players has been asking for different modes ever since the game was launched and although they have a limited time solo event on August, they did keep tabs on players response and feedback from the event and also suggested that the mode might come back. But the biggest issue of Apex Legends is that although it is a free to play game, it is not playable in all types of systems. Which is where PUBG Lite comes in because it is literally playable in all systems. So unless Apex Legends does something which will benefit the Indian players to play in any system, it won't be as popular as of PUBG Lite. But it seems like Apex Legends is coming to mobile because the chief executive of EA himself mentioned that the game is coming to mobile but you have to wait for one more year. Which means the game might be coming out around 2020 to 2021. With PUBG Mobile still being a big thing in India along with Call of Duty Mobile, adding Apex to the mix could only increase the player base. Right now Apex Legends has crossed over 70 million players and they're looking forward to expand to New York geographies with them releasing it in mobiles. But it will be a long wait. That was everything for this week of gaming news. Thank you so much guys for watching this episode. Make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment down below. What do you think about any of the Blizzard games that was announced this weekend? Subscribe to Gamer Connect and follow us on all social media platforms to know everything about gaming and much more. Join Gamer Connect community on Facebook and take part in various activities and discussions with your fellow gamers. 
Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I will be live streaming more games like Call of Duty and Overwatch for instance and also join my Discord server where we can chat and play together at the same time. This was me Given Manus and that was gaming.